Hey, welcome back to Wings Eagles Ministry, where today I'm sharing with you a very important video. And, and I realize sometimes, I know as a preacher, I've uh, been preaching a little over 30 years, there's times when you talk about, uh, you preach about victory, you preach about uh, rejoicing, you preach about shouting, you preach about uh, praising God and all these wonderful titles. And then there's sometimes you preach a message where it's just sort of, hey, this is going to be a little bit more... Uh, examine yourself and and make sure you're right with God. That is what we're talking about today. The title might have got your attention and it is actually what the Lord laid upon me the other day and it was almost this title because a lot of times God will give me the title before I actually get the message. But four words that should wake every Christian up, that should stir every Christian. Four words that we find in the Bible. So today, I'm asking each and every one of you, if you're a child of God, think about where you're at with Christ. Okay, I want you to listen to this entire video. It's not going to be very long, but I believe we're going to say some things that are very, very important in our walk with Christ. We're going to be reading out of the book of, or actually I'll just quote a few verses out of the book of Matthew, chapter number 25, and then I might read or refer to one or two particular verses. But... I want to say in beginning, I realize today that there are people that watch these videos that, you know, there's some beliefs that once you are born again, once you come to Christ, once you attain salvation, you can never be lost. Well, I've never believed that, and I never will believe that. And I'm not, I'm not downing anybody because I know everybody believes different, you know, their different ways, and that's up to the individual. But what I do want to do is I want to preach and teach the way that the Word of God teaches me. So, you know, and I'll give you an example. I realize that there are some people today, as they might believe those type of things, I think, I think, you know, for example, all you got to do is look at a few scriptures. Take, for example, the one scripture that says, you know, in the last days many will depart from the faith, okay? Well, the only way you can depart from the faith is you had to have been at the faith. You have had to have had the faith to depart to it or from it. So I think that right there shows you one thing that shows you that you can be lost after being born again. Now there's another, uh, actually another place too, and that's what we're looking at here in just a moment. Matthew chapter number 25. Now, I'm not going to read this whole chapter, but the Bible here talks about the parable of the ten virgins. Now if you're listening to this and, and maybe you've got a familiarity with it, but the Bible here talks about, Jesus actually used this as an illustration as far as the kingdom of heaven. So he wasn't using this and talking about anything else relating it to any other subject matter except a person making it to heaven. That's what he said in the first verse. It's like unto the kingdom of heaven. Okay, now he goes ahead and he talks about the bridegroom and the ten virgins. Now in the story, the Bible tells us here that they all had lamps okay and at one time they all had oil and and to me when I read these verses the lamps symbolize the body and the oil symbolizes the spirit within the body the spirit of God the spirit of salvation the breath of life that God puts in us where we're born again or born and born from above as the Word of God says in John chapter number three so here the Bible tells us that there was ten virgins. Five was wise. The ones that were wise had the oil in their lamps. Now the Bible also tells us that there was five that was foolish. Now we can find out here in, uh, let's see, let's read about it here in just a moment. Let me find it here. This is not the best lighting system in the world, and I do apologize. But it said, while the bridegroom tarried, and they all slumbered and slept. This is verse number five. At midnight there was a cry. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Okay, the Bible then said that all ten of the virgins arose and went out to meet the bridegroom. All ten. Okay. But it said the foolish, they said, give us your oil to the wise. Now notice what it said here. For our lamps are gone out. Now again, if you want to go back up to verse number two, it tells us here that there was five wise and five foolish. 
So in here in verse number seven, where it says, or verse number eight, it said the foolish said, it's talking about the five foolish. The five foolish said, their oil, give us your oil to the wise because our lamps are gone out. Their oil was gone. Their spirit was gone. Their joy of salvation was gone. Their victory in Christ was gone. They told the five wise, give yours to us. The five wise said, no, said, we're not gonna, we're not gonna give away ours. Said, you've got to go get your own again. Well, the Bible tells us when the five foolish went to get more oil, the bridegroom came. And it said, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. <clears throat> and the door was shut. Okay. So the bridegroom came when the five foolish were gone. And the Bible said here that the five wise went in with the bridegroom. The five wise had the oil in their lamps. They had the oil there already. It was still there from where it had been originally. The five foolish, their oil had went out. Their oil had left. So they said, you go get your own. So while they was gone to try to get more oil, the Bible said here that the bridegroom came and the five that was wise went with the bridegroom. Now notice here though, and the Bible said here, they went in with him and the door was shut. Notice that in verse number 10. The door was shut. Representing there was no more time then. There was nothing else they could do. The five foolish, they could not do anything now to get back in. But the Bible said they came up and began to knock. Open to us, open to us. But from the other side of the door, they heard the words, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. I know you not. The four words that should shake, wake, and cause every Christian today to look and see where you're at in God. Do you still have the oil of God? Do you still have the Spirit of God that is what the joy that you had the night God saved your soul? When Jesus Christ took you from an unbeliever to a believer, when you repented of your sins and Christ made you a new creature, do you still have that joy? in Christ? Do you still have that happiness? And do you still have that love for the Lord? Or has the oil went out? Now what happens when the oil went out? The light, that lamp light, just began to grow dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it was finally gone. So you say, what's the four words? The four words ought to be I know you not. Jesus said those words in this parable. And he said, this is the way that the kingdom of heaven is like. I know you not. Now that was to the Christian. That was to the born again. See, the ten virgins at one time were all wise virgins. They all had their oil. They all had their lamps trimmed and ready. But five of them grew, grew foolish. Five of them grew weary. Five of them might have grew tired of waiting. Five of them might have begun to look around and see things and thought, hey, I kind of like the way it used to be. This is a little bit boring for me. I don't really care about this. And all the while, their lamp was going out. The oil was, was leaving. The light was growing dim. I'm going to tell you something today. 
as I said, this, this clearly teaches that you can lose what you once had. Because that's what Jesus said here. He said the kingdom of heaven is like ten. The ten represented the church, the body of Christ. I'm not talking about a building. I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm talking about the body of Christ. And you know, I'm going to tell you the other thing that, that I thought one time, and I thought, I wonder if that might represent that. I thought, Lord, surely this don't represent that only 50% of the people that are in the body of Christ today will be ready when you return. And I, I'm not saying it represents that. It just makes you think sometimes. Because he used five out of ten. But that don't necessarily mean, and I hope that's not the way. I hope everyone is ready. But what I want you to understand today is you have to have an experience with Jesus Christ every day. You have to have your lamp trimmed and ready and the oil in that lamp each and every day. Yes, you can enjoy life. You can do your things that you like doing. You can do your hobbies and, and you can do your things that you enjoy doing and, and getting out and having a good time in, in you know, a good family type situation. You know, you can do these things, but you've got to keep God first. You've got to keep Jesus Christ first in your life. Because when you begin to do the other type of things, the things that maybe made you happy many years ago before you ever found Christ, when you begin to do those things again, and you do them so long, you're going to start to let that light go out just a little bit. Then it'll go out a little bit more, and it'll go out a little bit more. Remember this. You're not going to be able to go to heaven on your grandma's coattail or your mother's coattail, or your husband's, or your wife's, or your mother's, or your son's, or your daughter's. you got to do it on your own. And also, that's one thing, and remember this other thing. Two things. You're not going to go to heaven on an experience you had 20 years ago. You're not going to go to heaven on an experience you had in 1974. You've got to be living it each and every day. You've got to let Jesus Christ be Lord of your life each and every day. The parable of the ten virgins here in Matthew 25 gives a powerful illustration. And you think all ten of these were ready at one time. All ten of these were ready to meet the bridegroom at one time. Because they all had their lamps trimmed and ready. But five Five became as fools. See, they didn't start out as fools. They was, they was wise. But five became as fools and let their light go out. So today I'm asking you, just make sure each and every day, make sure your experience with Christ is fresh each and every day. You do that by giving God a little praise every day, by praying a little every day, by making sure Jesus Christ is Lord of your life each and every day. I hope this helps you today. Now, that's the four words that should shake, wake, rattle any Christian into realizing where they're at today in Christ. I don't know if it's today or not today, but I don't know if it'll be this week or the next week, but we're going to do actually a part two on this. And it will be the four words that should wake up every non-believer. Today was for the believer, okay? The next time, we're going to do four words for the non-believer, and I think you'll want to uh, watch that. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you've got any prayer requests, you got anything you want us to pray about, we've got our email that we put on these videos. Uh, make sure you always check in the description box. And feel free to send us an email. We will pray for you. We won't mention it to anyone. We don't share names. We just pray, my family and myself. We just pray for you. And we'll pray with you in any need you might have. Hope you enjoyed this video today. If you are new here and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit it before you leave. Remember, God loves you. God bless you. And we'll catch you on the next video.